Why men should stay single. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now you guys know, for me, everything goes both ways. The stuff I'm going to cover here, I think holds for both men and women, is that, uh, well anyway, let me not mess up the conversation, we'll just get into it. But what I'm going to do is, is the conversation that was being held, it was really saying that there was kind of like four areas that need to be addressed before guys should actually get into dating. And again, for me, I'd say women also. But the four uh, categories were financial stability, figuring out your purpose, healing, and then masculinity, that you had to get your masculine, masculine energy up. <laughs> so I'll cover my perspective on those. But anyway, the financial stability, let's talk about that. What, who defines what financial stability is and what is financial stability? Does it mean that you have six months of uh, emergency funds set aside? Does it mean you have to have a home? Does it mean you have to have a certain car? Does it mean you need to make a certain amount of income? What is financial stability and who is determining this? See, one of the things, uh, my background is I was in the financial service industry for over 30 years. One of the things I used to share with people all the time is 4% of Americans will retire where they're okay. 4%. Four out of 100, where they're okay, where that means they don't need any assistance in their finances. 1% will be financially independent. So if you take the four and you add the one, that's 5%. So technically, that means 95% of Americans at retirement age will either be dead or they'll be broke in terms of they'll need some kind of assistance. So if we're talking about financial stability, that means most people never get to that point, which means we're basically saying only 5% of the people should ever date. Think about it. Now, I do understand in a sense that if you're a person that you're in a financial position, and again, this is your own preference. For me, if I'm in a financial position where I'm struggling to buy my own dinner, <laughs> and to do the things that I just need to do to survive. I'm personally not dating. Not because I have to get to some financial number, but because I refuse to be in a position where I'm almost at a point where I need you to help me take care of my stuff that I need to be taken care of. Does that make sense? Um, and so for me, now, there are some people, and that's why you'll hear people argue that as a man, you're, you're supposed to be at a point where you're, you're, you guys know I don't play that male, female garbage. It's, it's, it's what works for you and your relationship, because trust me, there are women that want to take care of their men. Now, I know those of you that got the male ego thing, you, well, that ain't the way it's supposed to be. No, it's not the way it's supposed to be for you. So that doesn't make it right or wrong just because you think that's the way a man is supposed to be. There are some guys that want to be taken care of and there are women that want to take care of them. That works for them. For me personally, I'm not going to be in a position where if I can't take care of my own stuff, which means I can't do anything for you either, I'm personally not dating. But again, this is not some financial number that I'm waiting to get to that I got to have at least 10000 set aside or I got to have 20000 or I got to have six months of emergency fund. And I go, how much is my income multiplied by six? And I need to have that set aside for the emergency or I have to already have my house or I have... Folks, these, as you guys always hear me say, those are outside things. Anytime I hear people put financial stability and especially most of the people that have these conversations always put finances at the at the top. And one of the one of the comments that was made was a person said, well, because when you're financially strapped, then you're basically at the lower part of who you are as a human as far as your, you know, the way your thought process and all that. And therefore, you'll start to attract maybe the wrong people. And that's why you don't want to date if you're not financially st stable. Again, garbage. 
Why do I say that? That means you're linking what a person makes in income to character and 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 uh and 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 as you guys know, I keep talking about character and integrity. They don't equal the same thing. Our society keeps trying to make people believe that again. That's how you put labels on people. They keep trying to make you believe your character and your integrity is tied to how much money you got. That ain't true. There's people with great character and great integrity that don't have a great living financially. And some of them aren't trying to. Some of them are okay with making a nice living just because they're okay. And they, they're not trying to live the lifestyles of the rich and famous. That doesn't make them good, bad, right, or wrong. Just because your vision is to have the, the luxury home and all that, that's good. And that doesn't make them wrong. See, I always tell people, think about it. Wherever you are in life, before you judge others, understand there are people that can look at you the same way. You sitting there in your little house, you know, thinking you got it going on. You got your half a million dollar home or your million dollar home. I'm sitting in California because see some places with half a million dollar home who <laughs> would be the whole block. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, but you guys get what I'm saying. But you had that nice home. There are people who have five, six, seven, eight, ten homes that are worth what your one home is. And they'll look at you and go, how could you survive? How could, see, so before you start to judge and put others down, there are always people in a better position than you from an economic perspective that will put you in the same category that you're trying to belittle and put other people. So again, as I always say, character and integrity, quit trying to judge people based on finances. Now, for me, if a person has good character and good integrity, well, I, that'll come to, I'll cover that in a second. Um, purpose. This was kind of one of the topics that was brought up too, is that you need to figure out what your purpose is. Now, this is tying this into like, you're, you're looking for this thing. Uh, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, because that's why most people look at purpose, that you have figured out is something that grabs you and, and, and that's what you're going to follow. Because again, they're tying it back to income. They're tying it back to money. You have to figure out what your purpose is, what's driving you in your life. And you have to be on that path before you decide to start dating. Well, again, depends on perspective. For me, you guys heard me say purpose. Your purpose in life is to, is to experience being a human being. That's it. This is not mystical. We keep trying to make it seem like people are chasing after it. It's not. And the reason I like to clarify that is because you got so many people that are taking their lives. So many people that are feeling miserable in their lives because they can't figure out what their purpose is. And so if they can't figure it out, they'd rather not be here. Bad teaching. The reason I'd say what I, the way I feel uh, purpose is, the reason I have the definition that I have, is because I don't care what it is you want. If you even said, my purpose is to help the homeless. Well, why do you want to help the homeless? And if we keep saying why, why to whatever answers you get, we're going to get to the same answer every single time. No matter what it is we're talking about. It's because you believe by doing, being, or having this particular thing, person, place, activity, whatever in your life will make you feel better. That's it. That's always the answer. Everything we do in life because we believe it will make us feel better by doing it. So obviously that is purpose. It's not mystical because I tell people, think about it. That's like saying, and I hear people say that about athletes and, and, and it drives me crazy when I hear that they go, he was born, he was born a great basketball player or she was uh, born a great tennis player or whatever the case. Folks, quit taking people's credit away from them from working hard. They're great because they put effort into something that grabbed their attention. That's really what life is about. Life is about going out here and enjoying being, the, well, sometimes you ain't even enjoying it. Sometimes you're going to be sad. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be all of the emotions in life, but that's called experiencing being a human being. And you have to have all those experiences so you know what feels good and what doesn't. Understand for some people, negativity is what drives them. I know it sounds crazy, but for some people it do. The more negativity that come, because, and I shouldn't even say it's crazy, because the reality is most lessons are learned 
when things don't go the way that you want them to. Think about it. The world calls it failure. For me, I just say things didn't go the way that you wanted them to. But that's when you get your most lessons. That's even in sports. Teams lose games. You'll hear all the time that teams had to go through and get close to the championship and lose the championship and watch the other team celebrate. And so they got that feeling of what it's like to get to the finish line and not finish or whatever, get close into playoffs and not. So in life, things happen and don't go the way we want them. As Tony Robbins says, when things go well, we tend to party. But when things don't go the way we plan, we tend to ponder. See, that's when we start to do our thinking and we start to try to research and we start to try to figure things out. That's what life is about. If everything was smooth and everything went the way you designed it, life would be boring. So you did come here to experience the whole package. That's the purpose. And like I tell people, if, you're per if you believe your purpose was just to play basketball, for example, professional players only play, maybe most of them only play two to three years. The great ones get maybe 15, 10 or 15 in. What you going to do with the rest of your life if that was your purpose? Folks, that's not purpose. That's walking through the journey of life. Things cross your path that, that grab your attention. And so you go and you play in that arena until it's not pleasurable anymore. That's why you hear me always saying, if, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Because that's what it's about. It's like, well, I ain't having fun. It's time to go figure out something else. I don't care you went to school for 12 years to be a doctor. If you're not happy, it's time to move on. Quit letting the world tell you that's what that's what you are. You're a doctor. No, you're not. You're practicing medicine. Move on. Time to go do something else. All right, so let's talk about this healing. Healing only comes into play if you're a person that has had challenges in your past and you haven't released them. Then you need healing because you don't want to take your old things from your past relationships and take them into your new one. For example, if you had a partner that cheated or dishonored, disrespected you, you have a choice. You could either say that's how all men are, that's how all women are, and then it'll have, give you a bad taste in your mouth and you didn't learn the lessons, or you start to see that's that particular individual. And then you start to ask yourself questions like, were there red flags to begin with? Were there things that this person let me know up front what they were about? Did I have a conversation with them from the start that it's just me and them? We've talked about that before. Because if you don't have that conversation, quit trying to assume that a person is only dating you if you've never had that conversation. You gotta have a conversation. I know some people go, well, they know. This ain't about they know. Have a conversation. It's you and me only. I'm dating just you and I'm expecting the same. Are we in agreement? We need to get that clear because if not, the moment a person goes out here and messes up, the first thing they're going to throw at you is we never said we were committed to each other. So that's not this conversation, but I just wanted to bring that in as a, as a, as a part of the healing process is that you got to be able to say, okay, are there things that I can learn from those past relationships so that I can make sure that in the future, these things don't occur. Okay, so but again, the healing only comes into play if you've been hurt and there's some things you need to let go. If you learn the stuff that I'm teaching on, teaching on uh, Self Love Monday, then you have clarity and stuff from the beginning and the chances of all this stuff even coming into plan become very, very slim. This one, this masculine energy, this one, <laughs> this one, we always get in some deep conversations when we have it because I just think it's it's. It's bad programming that has been passed on from generation to generation, and it continues to be passed on. Here's the way I see it. Whenever you're talking about masculine in our society, anything that has to do with strength, uh, 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 power, is considered mas masculine. Anything that's considered cowardly, weak, negative, it's feminine. Don't we see that there's a problem with that? What we do anytime that we see a guy that has learned how to compromise, he's not a guy that's very uh, uh, outspoken, very aggressive as 
quote unquote, the people that say masculine, you put your woman in check. Cause that's usually what I get when I hear guys talking in masculine energy. Um, they're like, you need to put your woman in check. Folks, hold up. Ladies, understand this. Guys, you need to understand this too. Your woman's not your child. She's not a person you're supposed to be putting in check. That amazes me when people have these conversations like, you need to put your foot down. Why? She ain't a child. You ain't raising her. The reason you try to dominate, trying to intimidate, try to bully, I know those are bad words and people don't want to hear that, but that's what that masculine energy that most people are talking about, that's what they're saying, is that you want to intimidate your woman and let her know, I'm the man, I, I call the shot. She's not, she's not your servant. This is about being able to, and that's something I'll, I'll have a, 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 a do a video on too, because it's alpha, beta, what is it, alpha, beta guys and all. Folks, that's another one of those. Those things are so silly to me because once as a woman that if you speak up for yourself, this society says where you're using the masculine side of your of who you are. Huh? You mean if I stand up for myself, that means I'm being masculine? Can't I just stand up for myself because I'm standing up for myself? You guys follow me? And if you're a person that doesn't get into the battles, the, the, the you know, and, and act dominant or whatever, then you're a beta or you're a feminine guy or whatever. And it's like, one thing martial arts teaches, and I'm not in martial arts, but I know that's one of the teachings, is they teach people how to be humble and just the opposite. They'll walk away from a conversation and controversy when they know that they could actually take you out in a heartbeat. Why? Because they're not buying into this masculine, feminine, you know, this kind of, I have to show you I'm, I'm, I'm the man. I'm Folks, that, that doesn't mean that you're masculine because most of the guys that act like that only act like that with a woman. And if they do do it to a, a man, they're only going to do it to guys that they believe they can beat if they got into a battle with them. But let them walk up on a guy that they're questioning or a guy that they think will beat them down and you'll watch how that quote-unquote masculinity disappears. Why? Because it's it's a game. It's, it's, it's the stuff that we're putting out here. You guys have heard me say I'm a firm believer. The only time I buy into this male thing is from an emotional or from a physical perspective, if your family has ever been attacked, you better step forward and say, you got to go through me to get to my family. To me, that's the extent of the masculinity thing. Aside from that, relationships are about who's best equipped for whatever consequence that comes up in our relationship. Who's better equipped? That's the person that should be leading. This is not a masculine, feminine this is not a, you know, um, I was just seeing this thing. Um, they were talking about, uh, who is it? The Currys. So um, I guess his wife did some tweaking or uh, video or something. And um, and Steph Curry, the NBA player, and his, uh, and so people were saying his wife was very disrespectful because she did this. And, and that the reason that it occurred, and you hear more and more people saying the reason that it occurred is because he's a beta man and he's not an alpha man and he didn't put his foot down and he should let his woman know that he's that this is disrespecting me. And this. Now, I'm personally, my wife is in her late 30s, 40s, close to 40, and we got kids. We're going to have a conversation, but we it should have never got to that point to begin with, Okay. But if something like that happened, we're going to have a conversation because the fact is we got to be role models for our kids. And if this is the things that you're putting out on social media, then all of a sudden you got to you got to understand this is not about what the world is thinking. See, and there's the challenge that people have is they're believing they need to tell you how to run your relationship. I'm not trying to tell the Currys how to run the relationship. And there lies the problem. People keep saying this is what it means 
because his wife is doing it. No, that's what it means in your eyes. That ain't necessarily what it means in their house. But for me personally, because that's the only way I can say it, for me personally, I would have had a challenge with it only because the fact is I have young kids. And I don't want my kids think, you know, because all of a sudden my little daughter, because you know how, how the, the world, if she see her mama twerking on video and it's viral, what you think she going to do? Same thing. But I'm going to have a problem with my daughter doing that, especially she's a young girl. But what do I, what conversation do I have with her when her mama's doing it? See, that's the conversation that me and my wife would have. And I don't have to demean her. I don't have to degrade her. I don't have to try to bully her. I don't have to try to have this masculine energy. I need to have a human conversation with my wife. That's all it takes. We should have enough, a safe environment, as we talked about before, that we can talk about anything and things that are disruptive to the relationship. We need to be able to take each other's feelings and, and things into play. And that's what. You, but again, I'm not going to get keep going on about the masculine. You guys get where I'm coming from. I just don't buy it. We keep trying to talk about this. Get your masculine energy up and 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 run your house. And uh, folks, this ain't this ain't the old days when 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 people lived in communities and they were fighting the wilderness so the men protected the village. You ain't in no village. You ain't in that that same kind of environment. So you're not in that same kind of mindset. Women are out working now. Women are more taking care of their own stuff. Welcome to the real world. Now, if you get in a relationship where, she, you know what I'm saying, where she wants to stay at home and you want to take care of it, folks, and I've talked about this before too, dealing with this financial thing, guys that, that talk this masculine energy stuff are the same guys that walk around talking about, yeah, my wife gets to stay at home because I'm out here. I, I'm, I'm the breadwinner in my house. That's right. And I get to call the shots because I'm the man. I bring home the break, the bacon. I make the decision. She's not. Anyway, let me leave that alone. But what I'm getting to here is think about this. Your wife does work. Unless she got a maid, unless she got a cook, she got a job. She just ain't getting paid. And you walking around trying to act like you, you the man. <laughs> But anyway, we won't get into that. Y'all know I can get started on that one anyway. But anyway, but so for me, I think you guys kind of get it. For me, the main thing you need to do as far as male or female is, as I always keep saying, work on you first before you start to go into relationships. Get clear on what you want out of life. Then start dating. You'll hear people say all the time, when I stopped having sex, when I stopped, and that could be a whole different video right there. I tell people, I say, our society has tried to make sex the determining factor. I'm going to tell you now, as long as sex is making your decisions for you, you're going to have a rough life. Learning who controls sex, your mind or your body, is maturity. I'm not saying you won't be attracted to people. You may, you may have those urges but you get to make the decisions on what you do with those urges. So, but you'll hear again what I was getting to. You'll hear the people that said they stopped having sex. They really stopped dating. They took some time. They, they you know, and, and I'm talking about people that have already dated from the past. Maybe we're talking about that healing process. But when they took time to get their stuff together, then they went out and found the right partner. See, folks, that's not that's because if you understand what I'm saying, if you get that part together, the financial stability and all other stuff that everybody else is taking care of is automatically addressed automatically. Get you together first It's always going to be my conversation, always, because if you're if you have your character and integrity in place, you will decide whether your finances are in a position where you, where you could start dating. You'll understand if you have any healing issues because you will have to address that. And you understand I ain't got to play no role. I'm just going to be me. Find a partner that, 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 that um, works well with me. And that's it. But the key is always 
get you together first, then start dating. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. And you see all the things I got going on. And uh, as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. But here's the key. Don't let anyone tell you when or when not to date. That's going to always be yours. And don't let people believe, make you believe that you judge based on your financials. You don't judge based on your financials. You judge based on character and integrity. Because if you got great character and integrity, you're not going to bring the wrong people into your relationship because of the fact is, and, and, and you guys can do the research on it, character and integrity, most people uh, have already been, your character's already been created by the age of five. So by that point, anything you do after that is going to be a actual decision to make changes within yourself. You decided to make changes. So what I'm getting to there is so don't think that your character and integrity is going to attract a bad person that later after you make money, you're going to all of a sudden change. Who you, no, people that are, that are, that are, that are, uh, uh, have bad character. They're going to have bad character when they get money. If they got good character, they're going to have good character when they get money. It's not going to change. Quit buying into people getting you to believe that your money is dictating who you are. It's just the opposite. You will dictate what your finances are. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.